This is Indiana in the Morning presented by First Commonwealth Bank here on WCCS AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. And our interviews are brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Work-life balance has definitely taken on a new meaning in this year because of the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis pushing people into their homes to be to work actually for their living instead of working in offices and work-life balance definitely a new definition to that as the pandemic is going to continue joining me now to talk about how we can balance work and home life is a best-selling author speaker and corporate executive and a corporate america expert victoria pelletier victoria it is great to have you on our show thanks for having me glad to be here so let's talk about life in general. I mean, I'm sure you've probably have experienced this too, but work the work culture has definitely changed over the last eight, nine months because of the coronavirus uh, crisis that we've been going through in the United States. But it's really now becoming normal to be working from home more than working in the office. Yeah, 100%. And the reality is I think everyone needs to brace for the fact that there will be a new normal, and that new normal is not going to be a return full-time to bricks-and-mortar offices. Obviously, there will be some workers and types of work that needs to be done in physical workplaces, but there's going to be a new normal for, for environments in which work can be done remotely, whether it's on a rolling basis, you know, where maybe only one or two days a week they come in, but this is this is the new normal. The work-life balance is just life, and we're going to need to continue to adjust in a long-term basis around what that looks like. So with bringing work home, it's going to cause the house to become just about as stressful maybe as the office has been. How can we avoid a lot of that stress and a lot of those problems associated with having an imbalance in between work and home life? I think there's a host of things that we can do, but really importantly, it's creating boundaries, physical ones to the extent that we can in our, our, our homes for a place of work. For those who are fortunate to have a home office or a separate room they can work in, amazing. For those who can't, at least during the time we're working, even if it's at the kitchen table, you know, make that your workspace during that time with as few distractions as possible, but put it away. And then there's the mental boundaries that need to take place around the hours of the day that you're going to work, you know, versus then going and sitting on your couch and you bring your laptop with you. You never create that. So that a physical but also some mental boundaries over how and when the work's going to get done in your home. It's difficult, I would imagine, as you said, for people who don't actually have that home office, but you said the kitchen table works just as well as, say, the desk in a private room or something like that. So talk about the mental stress of it obviously keeping focused on work while you're at home it's going to be it's going to be difficult yeah there's there's two things that i'm seeing and hearing about as i'm talking to executives and and dealing with their teams around this so one is the lack of physical contact and engagement it's a huge dissatisfier for many, particularly extroverts like myself who want to go and engage in that different way versus looking, staring at a WebEx screen all day. So that's one element of it. So trying to find unique ways to create engaging opportunities with your teams, doing it remotely, fun, you know, virtual happy hours, can non-alcoholic too, but ways like that. So, you know, that would be one. The other one is the... Um, stress of not being able to create that delineation in our lives. Where does work and home life be, um, you know, begin and end? So working with employees to give them assistance, tools, counseling, and outlets for them to talk about that and identify alternatives that work for some people versus others. Set boundaries in the home sounds like it's something that needs to be done. So how do you approach that with a family member or um, your children saying, hey, I need to be a- away from all distractions at this time. you got to be able to help me out with this. Is, is there an easy way to do that? It, it's easy when you have teenagers like myself, but when you've got toddlers who don't listen quite nearly as well, uh, it, it's a challenge for sure. 
what I'd say is establish rules with family members over those, you know, sacred hours during the day. If you're going to be on conference calls and whether it's posting a sign on the door where they cannot come in, where we need to respect that there's for homeschooling and homework, these are the, the, the hours of the day and we need to respect that. That's one. Alternatively, looking at some alternatives with young children in the home, it's extremely challenging. So there's these pop-up pods, community pods of schooling that's being created where they're, you know, for virtual schooling, homeschooling, whether it's a parent who is already at home with children who can help and bring that out. There's also a number of businesses that are built around creating child, I'm not child care, I'm not talking about formalized programs, but ones where you can buy chunks of time at a, at a time, right? You might be able to work generally throughout the day and have some distractions or noise from um, at home from children or other, but there's going to be some where there's just a conference call. You, you can't do that. It's with a client where you can buy two, three, four hours of supervision for your children. There's, those are the ways in which I would encourage parents in particular to look at how to balance that, the, you know, those demands while working in one single environment. We're talking with Victoria Pelletier, a best-selling author, speaker, and a corporate executive and corporate America expert about how we can improve our work-life balance in 2021 as we continue through this crisis. So, Victoria, you said that this is going to be the new normal. Is there any way that this is going to go back to the old normal? I mean, we've got the vaccines coming out, but will people actually start feeling more confident enough to eventually return to a, a brick-and-mortar? I, I think they will. Certainly, as we can, as we see how the vaccines are performing, you know, as we hear about new strains in other parts of the world, so I think people are guarded. But I think once we continue to see the, you know, incidence and in cases decrease in vaccination being successful, people will gain more confidence, most definitely. I also think, although there is going to be a new normal, there's going to be not 100% working, you know, in, in offices, not that there was necessarily before, but a very high percentage, people are going to want to get back. They're going to want to engage. So with safety and confidence uh, you know, and fears allayed, I think you're going to see people wanting to return back just to go break bread, have coffee, stand around the water cooler, and have some conversation. There, there will be some return to some kind of normalcy, albeit the new, the new abnormal, if you will. Yeah, I was actually going to say, so there is going to be a chance that we could return to water cooler culture like we've seen on The Office or something like that. That's that's good. <laughs> exactly. That's good to hear. Uh, Vic, uh, Victoria, talk, uh, you're a best-selling author. Talk about your latest book. Well, my book's called Unstoppable, and that's a very much the way I live my life. So talking about becoming a corporate executive in my very early 20s and some of the lessons and adversity and beyond I've, I've, I've endured over the last number, number of years, 20 years as an executive in particular. Excellent. And where can people find the book? They can find it at my website, victoria-peltier.com, or look me up on LinkedIn. Excellent. Victoria, thank you very much for joining us here on Indiana in the Morning. All the best to you, and I hope that you have a wonderful new year. To you as well. To you as well.